Hi everyone, this is Paul Asadarian with Security Weekly and we're here at InfoSec World. I'm here with Phil Lieberman from Lieberman Software. Phil, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks. Uh, Phil, so we're just going to start with what I call security philosophy. Sure. Uh, some very open-ended questions to uh, get a discussion going. What is the most common trait amongst organizations that have suffered a security breach? Well, that would be every organization. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the common characteristic would be pain and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> would be they have software, right, well, and a network. <laughs> well, they, they have a computer, they have a network, they have an intrusion. I mean, you know, there's that saying, there's two types of people, those that know they've been intruded upon and those that haven't figured it out yet. Yes, and that's, that's very true. And that's kind of the, the situation with most organizations. Most organizations get this kind of uh, intrusion on such a regular basis mm -hmm. that, um, in fact, in, in this session that I did at the keynote here, we talked about the idea of acceptable loss, of getting people to the idea of not really thinking about walls being big enough, but the idea that they will get through the walls and what to do after that. Right. No, absolutely. Um, what is the best way to determine which security solutions you need and the best way to evaluate them? Wow, great question. So the question is, which is which is the best solution? Of course, ours. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but you know, here's the problem. Uh, the 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 problem that we see today is that a, a lot of companies have bought antivirus uh, for so many years mm -hmm. with the idea that that is all that they really need, or they have purchased a firewall and figured mm -hmm. that's all they need, or they buy anti-malware and that's what they need, or the next silver bullet that shows up like uh, user threat analytics, we're going to be able to detect them when they're inside of the environment, or um, endpoint protection uh, mm -hmm. besides antivirus, you know, advanced uh, technology to do it. The problem with all of these is that they all work but they don't work 100%. Ooh. And so what you end up with is a situation where the noise level drops with each solution that you put in, but ultimately they will get through. They will eventually enter the environment and they will have their way with you and all of your machines. So the question then, <clears throat> and one of the challenges that we've had in, in our world and, and what we've been building in technology is, what happens once they get in? How do you limit those losses once they're there? And a lot of this involves ideas and technologies that are about as old as the world. For example, the introduction or reintroduction of things like air gaps, disconnecting machines so that they're not on the network, setting up different segregated networks, uh, changing identity management so that one identity doesn't get you into every machine. You have to know a lot of different things mm -hmm. to be able to move within the environment itself. And controlling, I'll set you up for this one, which machines trust each other is important well, as well. Right, exactly. <laughs> what machines trust each other, where you can flow traffic from point to point. Mm -hmm. But the, the most important thing is that a customer really has to think about this idea that if they get into the environment, how much damage will be sustained depending on the type of machine that they break into. Mm. Rather than accepting full and total loss, make a decision as to what loss is acceptable to you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our particular company, we specialize in the management of SSH keys, usernames and passwords, you know, understanding privilege, limiting the amount of privilege and limiting the scope of privilege, um, and the idea of taking humans out of this process. One of the things that we did at this uh, conference, and one of the things you'll see coming up a lot, is this idea of automation and the idea of security being an automated activity. And it's a hot topic today. Oh, well, it is. And, and th think about this for a moment, which is that you're being attacked by automated weapons that are scanning every IP address, going into every machine that it can find, scanning them, looking for vulnerabilities, and then exploiting those vulnerabilities. <clears throat> and in fact, teeing up the problem or teeing up the opportunity for the attacker on the other side saying, look at all the goodies we've just delivered to you by automation. Mm -hmm. And then they then take over and use those and sell them. So the issue which we're bringing up is the idea that you need automation and protection also. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of great companies out there that have orchestration. Uh, the, you, there is now the ability to get uh, indications of compromise. Um, and then there are ways of even operating the environment, assuming compromise, even though you can't detect it, and effectively rebuilding the environment. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things we talked about at the conference in the keynote was this idea of treating machines instead of as pets, but as livestock. Mm -hmm. In other words, say every night rebuilding all of the systems or rebuilding a subset of them, assuming that they're compromised and just simply operating this idea of constantly rebuilding things. 
Today we see modern IT more as an organic type of, uh, uh, of, of system. Think of it as the human body. You have viruses that are constantly attacking you and you have antiviruses. Mm -hmm. You have uh, organs regenerating themselves. You have skin that protects you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as in any kind of organic life form, if something really bad happens, you're going to need some really serious help as to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. And that's where you see things like intrusion remediation mm -hmm. and different specialists. And where I like, um, a strategy that I like that ties into the field that you're in as well is understanding the indicators of compromise and then going in and disabling people's accounts based on some automated process. I'm sure. sure there might be a human involved, but that's where I really like your technology specifically in your field because it allows me to actually do something. Well, yeah, in fact, think about this for a moment, which is that we really prefer that nobody have access to anything mm -hmm. uh, for any period of time that is persistent. Yeah. And, and that yeah. is a philosophical idea that if, I'm, if I have access to a domain administrator, maybe that's what I need, but every time that domain administrator touches a machine, it leaves that hash there or leaves that Kebras key there. It's one of the most which, exploited things that attackers and pen right. testers alike are doing today. Right, and then you pick that up and now you mm -hmm. can go move throughout the environment. But this brings up another question, and that is the issue of the, the nature of the disease and also the nature of the medicine to mm -hmm. cure the disease. So, for example, one of our technologies allows you to reset Kebros, mm -hmm. which means that if you have indications of compromise, you can reset Kebros, but what does that mean? It means everybody gets logged off. Right. That means the bad guys get logged off, their stolen key doesn't work, but everybody in the company gets logged off at the same time, mm -hmm. which means that IT can't do that on their own, which means they have to have pre-set this up with the CEO and the board and the CFO mm -hmm. and getting prior approval that the mitigation or the cure that they're going to provide is acceptable uh, at a business level mm -hmm. or when they're going to actually do it. But it means telling the CEO, you know what, somebody else controls this environment till 7 p.m. until we shut down. Are you good with that? Right, right. And, and making it's them actually... Yeah. Right, exactly. Have yeah. them make that uh, understand that um, they're going to pick some poison mm -hmm. to, to kill the disease, but each one has its own uh, version of toxicity. Similarly, access to sensitive systems, we ask people to justify that. Do an MFA login, mm -hmm. and then you don't get access to everything. You get access to one thing or two things or something that's pre-set up. So mm -hmm. we're taking away ubiquitous access. It doesn't mean we're slowing them down. We're just right. simply saying if somebody steals a credential, they're only going to get to a few things. Yeah. It's minimizing the it's damage. It's minimizing the damage, minimizing the risk. But also, we also are part of an, another trend, which is we want the CEO and the board to be involved in IT. Mm -hmm. We want them to make those hard decisions, and we want them to work with the business units to have them understand that survival uh, in IT is a matter of cooperation, but also mm -hmm. taking a certain amount of pain on a regular basis in order to make sure that the environment stays secure and that the losses are all acceptable losses. Phil Lieberman, Lieberman Software, thank you very much. You bet.